Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Rola Rabah. I'm an oral maxillofacial surgery resident, and today I'm taking you on my very last night shift of general surgery. I've been on general surgery for the last 14 months. It's part of my oral maxillofacial surgery training. If you're confused why you need to do general surgery on oral maxillofacial surgery residency, make sure you check out other videos in my channel where I talk more about the path of OMFS. But for today, I will take you on my very, very last night shift. I'm very, very excited to finish up 14 months of general surgery and head back to my own service for the remainder of my training. And so I've officially completed four years out of six. I have two more to go and then I will graduate as an oral maxillofacial surgeon. So without further ado, let's get to my night shift vlog. I am on hospital premises right now and about to walk in to get sucked out from the night intern who happens to be my OMFS co-resident. Um, he was covering the day shift and I'm covering the weekend night shift. And then tomorrow I transition as a senior on oral maxillofacial surgery. So it's gonna be abrupt. It's gonna be a little bit chaotic, but exciting nonetheless. So let me get inside the hospital quickly, get sign out, and then I'll show you what the rest of the night is going to look like. I just got sign out, which means I'm now carrying the pager. Um, when you're doing general surgery, weekend to night shift, you are covering vascular surgery, thoracic surgery, transplant surgery, pediatric surgery, colorectal surgery, bariatric surgery, and let's not forget surgical oncology. Um, am I forgetting anything? I think that's enough, enough services to cover. Um, so lots of different services, lots of different patients. Luckily, um, there's no real big operations over the weekend. Um, just basically um, patients who had operations during the week. Um, if there's an emergency that comes in, then that's an operation. So you're not doing as many post-op checks as you do during the week. And generally speaking, a lot of patients start to get discharged. So progressively throughout the weekend, your list gets smaller and smaller and smaller, but definitely a lot of patients to um, read up on, follow, make sure you're checking vitals, um, rounding on them. And if anything were to happen, then you have to be able to triage them properly um, and make sure that you're communicating to the senior on call or attending on call. So it does get pretty challenging, but um, I actually enjoy weekend nights. And so since this is my last weekend night ever, I'm going to try to enjoy what is left of it. Hey, can I take an on call room, please? A lot of times I will grab an on-call room um, just to have it handy because usually you can have it for 12 hours and the on-call rooms aren't anything fancy I'll show you guys but it's usually just a bed a computer a desk a chair and although I don't always get to sleep sometimes I do get to snooze if it's a slow night um, but mostly I like to just be able to like stretch my legs for a minute get away from the workroom and just have a change of scenery so I always pick up an on-call room whether or not I end up using it will be up to how the night goes. So the cafeteria closes at 7 p.m. I literally have one minute. Let's see if they'll let me buy coffee. So I went and saw all of my patients. I had a post-op check that I needed to do on a patient who needed emergent surgery over the weekend. Um, and now that everything has kind of settled in, I am going to eat my dinner. It's always really, really weird eating dinner um, late at night, but when you're on night shift, you just kind of flip your schedule upside down. I was able to make this salad though, because on night shift, I feel like I have a little bit more time to be able to do some day time tasks and so Chris went grocery shopping and I made salads for the rest of the week which is going to be really nice because a lot of you guys know that I have a wedding coming up so I've been trying to eat healthier and on night shift all I want to do is usually snack so I'm trying to avoid the on-call snack room let's see if that actually is going to be successful and this is truly part of my wedding prep this is what I call my rabbit food snack. Instead of snacking on the chips and all of that that I really want to snack on, instead I'm eating snappies, carrots, grapes, 
and some hummus. So very proud of myself, you guys, very proud. All right, you guys, I don't want to jinx myself, but I am headed to the on-call room. I want to just stretch my legs and get on the computer and maybe do some studying. Sadly, I am taking the USMLE Step 3. Many of you guys know that in order to um, be a licensed MD, you have to pass Step 1, Step 2, Step 3, three exams that are the bane of everyone's existence. And so I already finished Step 1 in medical school, Step 2 last year. And now I am taking step three. You're supposed to take step three um, sometime during intern year or a couple of months afterwards. And so I finished um, my intern year and decided that I would take it in the first two months of my senior year um, in OMFS. And so I think this is good timing. I don't want to forget a lot of the clinical medicine that I learned as an intern on general surgery. And so um, I'm going to be studying for that exam. There's really not a lot of time to study for step three. Um, in medical school, you set a had a lot of time to study for step one which was super super important because that score um, basically facilitated uh, residency applications and the types of program that you can get into. Step three is not as stressful, especially for all maxillofacial surgery, because really you just want to pass. You're not trying to get into another residency or fellowship or anything like that. And so um, it's not as stressful, but still stressful because I do want to pass and do well. is the fancy schmancy on call room there's a very important desk here where i can log into epic and get to my patient's electronic records and i can stock their charts and make sure their vitals are good and then of course a phone so i can call back for any pages that i get and most importantly there is a sad little bed definitely not the ritz carlton you guys but when you're a resident, this will do. Some you world questions. If you've studied for the US only step one or step two, then you know um, U world is a very, very popular Q bank for all of the different um, licensing exams. I know they also do it for um, other um, licensing exams for nursing, I think, and PA. And so a lot of you will be familiar with this um, platform. What's really challenging about um, step three is the fact that we get asked things like dermatology, pediatrics, ob primary care stuff. And, you know, it's been, it's been a few years that I've been on general surgery. And so I don't really remember a lot of the basic primary care um, stuff that I learned in medical school, but there's always something to learn. And I think it's really important because of course, as healthcare providers, if someone comes in, with this type of lesion with irregular borders here. I'm guessing this is a melanoma. It's eight millimeters. Um, it looks, you know, irregular. It looks dark, different from all of the other freckles. So which of the following is the best next step in management of this patient's skin lesion? Um, you know, this type of lesion, I think you would need to do a biopsy for sure. I don't think you would jump to a lymph node biopsy. I don't think you would watch it because melanomas can be very, very, very aggressive. Um, I don't think that this is a diabetic or insulin resistance issue. I think they're trying to get at um, a different skin condition. Now, excisional biopsy, incisional biopsy, that's kind of tricky because um, I think when it's a small lesion, you could do um, an excisional biopsy, but if it's, a, if it's a bigger lesion, you would do incisional. This is eight millimeters, so it's still pretty small. My gut feeling says excisional. Let's see if that's correct. Oh, yes. All right, so that's good. So after I do the question, then I'll read a little bit about their explanation of the question, and I'll, I'll do this until I'm tired of it. And so. That's how you world work. I think, you know, this, it's funny because I would think that this like doesn't really apply um, because it's dermatology, but it totally does because you can get melanoma on the face and um, as an oral maxillofacial surgeon, it's my obligation to be able to recognize this and make the appropriate referral if I ever see a patient with it. So there's always something to learn from everything.
All right, you guys, so I lucked out and actually got to do a couple of hours of questions. I even took a 30 minute nap. So tonight was a pretty good night. Um, I am going to head back to the workroom. It's about 4 a.m. I'm going to check on a couple of patients that I've been stalking to make sure that their vitals remain stable overnight. And then I am going to um, prep my handoff so that I am ready for sign out right at 5.30. I'm gonna sign out and be done with my last shift of nights and my last shift on general surgery ever so feeling like i'm almost there last time i'll ever get these pages guys i cannot believe it i just finished my last shift of general surgery after 14 months of being off service and now I get to go back to oral maxillofacial surgery as a senior resident finishing up this year and then one more chief year and then I am all done. It has been a really, really long road but super satisfying to know that I finished a big part of my training today. And so uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this vlog make sure that you subscribe to my channel and comment below let me know if there's other videos you want me to do don't forget to follow me on instagram you guys at 15 blades i post like this daily and you get to follow my journey during the next couple of years of my training and beyond and you know i would be going home and sleeping right now except since I'm transitioning from general surgery to oral surgery, I'm actually going straight back to work. So I'll be doing a 24 hour shift today. Um, wish me luck. It is going to be a brand new journey and I love to have you along. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.